on-the-scene coverage of ACC 2015 is supported by Effian. I'm Peter Block for On the Scene, and I'm in San Diego at ACC 2015. Standing next to me is Bill Abraham from Ohio State, and Bill has been interested in heart failure and some new devices to try to deal with heart failure. You know, medications are getting to be a little boring, so let's do an intervention or something. Uh, this is carotid sinus simulation implanted surgically. So, Bill, tell me about what this implantation device is to start with, of course, and then the study. It's fascinating. Yeah, so the device is a neurostimulator. It is designed to stimulate the carotid sinus, so the carotid baroreceptor. Uh, it's implanted much like a pacemaker, except the lead itself is surgically implanted to, to stimulate the carotid sinus. And what it does then is to signal afferents to the brain so that it centrally mediates the balance between sympathetic and parasympathetic activity. Specifically, it reduces sympathetic activity, enhances vagal tone, and we think those are good things in heart failure patients. Yeah, we've known for a long time that heart failure patients have a lot of sympathetic overtone, if you want to look at it that way. So this regulates it and gets it back in balance, I guess, is what you feel. It, it tell, okay, so tell me, what, how many patients did you look at? What kind of findings do you have? I mean, some important stuff is coming out of this. Absolutely. So this is the first ever randomized controlled trial of baroreflex activation therapy in patients with heart failure. 146 patients, class 3 heart failure, reduced ejection fractions, uh, and we saw spectacular improvements in New York Heart Association functional class ranking, quality of life score, six minute hall walk distance, improvement in biomarkers such as BMP, and actually strong trends towards reduction in heart failure hospitalization. Well, that's exciting. Now, were all these patients on maximum medical therapy as well, or did you follow them more closely? Are there other reasons they got better? Yeah, I don't think so, because we required at baseline that these patients be well-treated with guideline-directed medical therapy and remain in class three despite that. So I believe this is incremental or additive benefit. So let me just take uh, an example, endpoint, for example. Uh, I always like six-minute walks. That's mm -hmm. what we did for our TABR patients. What did you see in your six-minute walk patients? Yeah, the uh, between group difference in six minute hall walk distance was 58 meters. And as you know, that's a big improvement in the six minute hall walk distance. In heart failure, for example, with cardiac resynchronization therapy, the average improvement's about 30 meters. So you've doubled the walk distance, that's not so bad. What about heart association and other things? Yeah, so the percent of patients who improved by at least one, and in some instances two class rankings was 55% in the treatment group and only 24% in the control group. Quality of life score was improved by 19 and a half points. As you know, that's also big. Our standard therapies for heart failure improved that score by maybe five or 10 points. So those are big time changes. So Bill, uh, I guess we should send a message out there. If you'd like to send a message saying, where does this fit with other heart failure therapies? Uh, where do you think this is going to end up? Well, I think we've entered a new era for heart failure therapy of neuromodulation, trying to restore physiological balance to the autonomic nervous system to improve heart failure patients. I think the promise looks great. We need to confirm it in a larger uh, randomized controlled pivotal trial. So a big trial is coming up. Uh, this is new, exciting technology. Thank you, Bill, and we'll keep our eye on what happens when you have the big randomized trial. Appreciate your being here. Thank you.